Welcome everyone. My name is Peter Platzer and I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Spire Global. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit about the company and the impact it is having on planet Earth to create a more sustainable, prosperous and equitable future right here for every one of us. I would like to share a few slides with you that um, visually underscore the things that we do every day here for our customers on planet Earth. Spire is a New York Stock Exchange listed company. Um, and uh, that means that the first thing that I have to share with you is a couple of, uh, of disclaimers that I know you have read already now that I have shared them for a few seconds. Spire has uh, a fully deployed constellation on orbit, over 100 satellites that uh, scoop up data from all of Earth every 15 minutes, over 100 times a day. We also have a global ground station network that connects those satellites to the ground to capture hundreds of millions of data points every single day about, about the Earth. Um, our technology has all been developed in-house and we have um, accumulated over 500 years of space heritage on our own uh, technology. Um, our uh, employees, over 400, sit in eight offices across three continents, servicing um, over 700 uh, customers through our subscription basis, which is the way how you consume um, Spire services. And our uh, FY23 ARR midpoint guidance is 132 million after we crossed over just about um, the $100 million point um, uh, this year with uh, 99.6 million. Um, we own and operate the world's largest multipurpose constellation of satellites. Now, multipurpose constellation of satellites sounds very complicated, so let me give you a bit of a guide map of how to think about satellites and how they are used to capture what is happening on Earth. We call them uh, talking, looking, and listening satellites. And they're as different as, let's say, in the transportation industry, you would have ships, trains, and trucks. Unfortunately, most people still call them all satellites, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a trick of how to understand if they are talking, looking, or listening. Talking satellites are satellites that um, uh, transport data from one spot on Earth to another one. And that could be internet bandwidth. You know, I'm sure you have heard of, of, of companies like Starlink and, and, and Kuipers and OneWeb. Or it could be, could be phone communication, like an AST or an Iridium. And uh, uh, that is a, a category of satellites that have been in use for a long period of time. And I'm sure many of you have heard from them. The next category are looking satellites. Looking satellites are satellites that capture the reflection of the sun on the surface of Earth as it goes up towards the, towards the sky um, and capture information about, about Earth that way, generally with something like a camera. So they work really well during, uh, during daylight and they work really well when there is clear weather and in particular over land. And companies that you might have heard there are Maxar, Black Sky, Planet um, and others. And then there are listening uh, companies that take radio frequencies um, and use those radio frequencies to understand what is happening on, above, or around Earth. Now, radio frequencies have the advantage that they don't require the sun, so they work during day and during night, and they are independent of the weather. As a matter of fact, they often give you information about the weather, be that the temperature uh, in the atmosphere or the wind speeds in the eye of a hurricane. Spire is not the only company in the listening category. You have other companies like Geoptics and Clears and Hawkeye, but Spire is the largest company in that category by a number of metrics, almost any metrics that you can, uh, uh, you can think of. Um, uh, we cover uh, the Earth, as I had mentioned earlier, about 100 times a day with a satellite constellation that is fully deployed at this point in time, which does give us a very, very nice um, uh, position because we don't have to build massive amounts of additional assets. There's just a maintenance that happens from all the assets that we have deployed. And the other really, really neat thing about our capabilities in space is that they are software defined, which means through upgrades of software, we can change what they do, the type of data they collect, how much data, the accuracy of the data, 
So that creates a massive amount of flexibility in how we can serve our over 700 and rapidly growing customer base. If you look at the underlying demands of uh, Spire's business model, you find two massive global trends. I would call them secular trends that are defining at least one of the big challenges in this century and that we'll find repeatedly for the rest of the century, in my mind, in the news. One of them is climate change and weather impact, and the other one is global security. Now, both of them have some defining features, which were the reason of how we built Spire. Namely, that they rely on data that is only and exclusively available from space. That is a type of data that Spire captures. That is a type of data um, that is absolutely necessary to tackle and handle, mitigate, um, uh, and, and manage the impacts from weather, climate change, as well as global security. Spire is uh, uh, tracking everything that is happening on the oceans, all of the world's ships, um, in the air, all of the world's airplanes, and all of the world's weather. And that means we have markets that make up about 150, 200,000 potential customers and a size of about, call it $100 billion. And it's this massive market size combined with those global trends I just talked to you about that has allowed the company to grow so rapidly. Indeed, we grew from 1 million in ARR, annually recurring revenue, to about 100 million of annually recurring revenue in 2022 in just five years time. That's just a very, very high growth rate. And the other thing you see here is our net retention rate. As a SaaS company, we are obsessed with our customers' retention rate and satisfying their needs and being able to serve more of their needs with our additional products. And when you are able to do that, it is reflected in the net retention rate, the average additional business that customers give you year over year over year. And for us, that was 117%, um, a metric that for Spire has been above 100% for a very, very long period of time. And certainly something that we are very proud of. It's almost like an NPS score and a customer happiness score. And it means that we are indeed successful in serving the needs of our customers and being a great partner in helping them solve even more business problems every single year. This is the business model of Spire. We collect data once on the left-hand side with our fully deployed Constellation um, ground station network and analytics platform. And then on the right-hand side, you see that we sell it many, many times. Classic data and uh, analytics as a service business, classic SaaS business. It's just that our method of capturing that unique and valuable data is space, giving us an enormous competitive advantage and enormous barrier to entry. But that's just not um, uh, uh, the whole picture. All of our data is available as a subscription and only as a subscription. So we start with what is happening right now. We call that clean data. It's like the raw data structured and organized in an easy to consume way. The fastest time we ever had a customer onboarded from first contact on our web page to our data being in the operation was 48 hours. The next step for us is that we bring in third party data and analytics. We make the data smarter and more valuable and make that available as a subscription. The next level then is that we add um, AI and machine learning and algorithms to predict what is going to happen and make that available as a subscription. And then the last one is where you tailor solutions with additional analytics visualizations um, so that you help customers to understand what they should be doing. This is the business model of Spire from day one, and we have built um, competitive advantages from left to right throughout this whole chain in the hardware, the software, the analytics, and the AI that derive value from what we capture to help solve more and more business use cases for our customers. 
I often say I'm originally from Austria, that you can take the Austrian out of, out of Austria or the European out of Europe, but you can't take Europe out of the European. And we Europeans always have these strange notions that companies should be making money and be profitable and not just grow. And so we have been on this steadfast march towards profitability for way over a year. And we announced that. I mean, we, gave, um, uh, we gave the world a target deadline. And now it is, uh, it is 12 to 18 months of free cash flow profitability. And what you see here is how our margins have consistently tracked and a steep incline towards that zero line of profitability as our revenue and ARR have grown the ARR being the forward looking of what revenue is going to be in the future. It is probably the charge, um, the chart that I'm most proud of, of what the team has been doing, because we have been able to solve customer use cases at a very fast growth rate, while at the same time driving efficiencies in the company that allow us to be profitable. You know, one of the elements there um, uh, that our CFO has been driven, uh, driving for a long time is the small amount of capital that is required on an annual basis to replenish all of our um, space and ground infrastructure that drives the collection of this data. It's just 10 to $12 million. And that drives a quasi unlimited amount of revenue as that constellation is complete and fully deployed and allows us to collect all the data that is required by our customers and by our products. And with that, um, I leave you with just mentioning the mission of Spire that you will find infusing all of our products and what gets us to work excited to serve our customers every day. It is to leverage data and analytics from space to create a more sustainable, prosperous and equitable future right here on planet Earth, driven by the two megatrends I mentioned, climate change and global security. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day.